Hello, everybody. Are we on, Arwen? I'm just checking to see if you're there. I can't tell. Arwen, are we on? Are we on? If you're there, hello. I can't tell if anybody is there, so give me a minute. Yes, we can see and hear you. Thank you, Dorothy. Well done. <laughs> I'm gonna begin. Welcome everybody to what can be this year's holiday meal. Um, and happy holidays. I hope you're doing well. So today you should have your recipe sheet from Lifestyle Medical. If you don't, um, you can call the office tomorrow because it was sent out to our patient list. I don't know if um, the Gosky Center is with us. If you are, I am so glad you are. Uh, our members of the Gosky enjoy our classes we enjoy it when they're on so hello we're going to be doing uh three what four recipes tonight and i'm doing them in order of how i can present a meal at the end that works out time wise so if you look at your recipe sheet and i'll tell you what's on it in case you can't look at it you don't have it printed uh we have for today's meal, a uh, roasted Brussels sprout with a apple juice uh, glaze. We have a golden roasted cauliflower with turmeric coating, and it's served whole, so it's really magnificent. And then we're doing a portobello pot roast. Portobello pot roast. And no, there's no meat in that. And... Um, and then we're going to have Barbara, um, Barbara's healthy oatmeal cookies. And um, we'll end everything at about 7.30. My screen's just gone dark and I need to, uh, okay, now we have a problem there. My screen is going dark. We're having some technical problems. I have a cam, uh, a webcam that we use to do the class, it's not working. We're using my computer and I've got the feeling that my computer is, is um, gonna give me trouble tonight because it keeps pushing me out. Uh, so I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. We will do class and we'll get it done well. So I'm Nan Simonson for anyone I haven't met. The recipe collection is entitled Recipes for Longevity because here at Lifestyle Medical with our four pillars of health being movement, that's exercise, resilience, that's rest and relaxation and stress release, that's, and then uh, movement, that's, well, we talked about that, a community, that's your getting together with people and having a chance to socialize that makes a difference for your health. And then finally, nutrition. And that's not finally. That's, well, some people think everything, but it's not. It's all in the balance. And we do um, stress a whole food, plant-based base to your dietary regime. If you include animal products, then just keep piling in vegetables and fruits and legumes and legumes, meaning beans, peas, and um Include tubers in your vegetables, fruits, and then seeds and nuts if you like them. And I eat all of that. As a matter of fact, for two years, I've been 100% whole food, plant-based, and loving it and healthier than ever. So let's go ahead and begin because I've got to get this guy in the uh, oven because he's going to cook. It, she, is going to cook for 45 minutes. I'm going to be 
spreading. And I wouldn't do this if I were just home and had the time to get all this out of off my hands, but I'm gonna use gloves. I'm gonna be spreading a, a coating on the cauliflower. And the coating is a very savory mix of uh, fresh ginger, and I use my little grater to grate the ginger. And I, for one, when I buy my ginger, I, for one, wash it as soon as I get it home, dry it off well before I put it open in an area of my refrigerator so it doesn't get um, damp, uh, not in a plastic bag. And I grate it even with the skin on. That's why I wash it well. And I buy organic ginger so that I know that it hasn't been sprayed with anything. And it's an easy way to work with it. You can slice it, you can peel it, slice it, and then chop it finely. But I think grating works really well. So what I have in my, or what I'm going to be putting in my mini processor is grated ginger, tahini. And if you're not sure what tahini is, it's high protein, high healthy fat. Uh, ground up sesame seeds and it adds a richness of texture to your foods it helps it adhere to the vegetables and it adds protein because two tablespoons of tahini is eight grams of protein that's one tablespoon four grams of protein that's quite a bit so we have tahini we have miso paste and if you're not familiar with miso paste even though now I'm going to come around and push the button and we're just all going to live with that there because the screen is Fading. Miso is a fermented soy product. Very healthy because the fermentation is also a probiotic for you. It looks expensive. It's $4.59 for this, but this has lasted me maybe three quarters of a year. And by using a tablespoon at a time, or maybe a little more, but not usually, and this is 14 ounces, it's, oh gosh. Oh, I don't even know how many servings, 56 servings at, so it's about 20, oh, I don't know. I'm not even going to do the math because they're doing it by teaspoons and 56 ounces and a teaspoon is three, three teaspoons is a tablespoon. So it's 20 tablespoons. So it's a little more than a cup, a cup of 16 tablespoons. Anyway, miso adds what they call umami, just like mushrooms do. And we're going to have mushrooms today, so this is going to be a very savory meal. And then I mix together the broth that it calls for. We've got three tablespoons of veg broth and prunes. Well, I put my prunes in in advance. They are uh, pitted prunes. Uh, I put them in in advance to sort of soften them. You really don't have to, but I did that so I get a nice homogenous blend. And then I have the combination of the miso paste, tahini, um, and tamari. And tamari is soy sauce. Um, I use a gluten-free tamari. You can use a low-sodium tamari. But I can't find organic, gluten-free, and low-sodium. And I want the organic, and I want the gluten-free. Um, but if you're just looking for tamari, you don't need the, you're not concerned about the organic or the gluten-free, you can get low sodium tamari, which is a really good idea because it's a, there's, there's plenty of sodium in here and I don't know that we need that much. And this is what I buy, the organic tamari gluten-free soy sauce. All right. I'm going to blend this. I don't know how noisy it'll be, so sorry. If you have any questions, write them in the chat box, and from time to time, Arwen may ask me. And by the way, Arwen, who is our office manager and our chief financial officer at the practice, is helping us out today. All right. I'm blending it well because I want it to be a nice paste. So... I'm going to, this is kind of fun, I'm going to stab through the cauliflower to give it a little bit more surface area. And let some of this 
steam out of it as it's cooking. And there. And then I found this little Cuisinart processor. Um, I think I saw it once at Costco. Uh, I thought it was a little, well, the one that I found at Costco was in a box that indicated it had been used, not used, but returned, so maybe used. And it was really inexpensive, but I've seen them online and they're not, they're not cheap, but it's very handy to have this little guy. I like it a lot. And I have the idea that I got from Chef AJ. I'm walking over and doing this now. And Chef AJ is, gosh, I'm going to say nationally known, maybe even internationally. As a matter of fact, she is known for her skills in the kitchen and her expertise at weight loss. And she is also a member of our um, medical um, group. She insisted that she find a lifestyle medical doctor because she knows, as I know, that in most conventional practices, what needs to be fixed is fixed quite often in a way that doesn't address the illness, but the symptoms, and that is in conventional ways with just medication. And we at Lifestyle Medicine focus on the body healing itself by doing a lot of the things that affect us at a cellular level, like getting enough rest, getting enough exercise, eating well. Again, whole food plant-based gives you a lot of nutrients that help you heal yourself. So I'm going to rub this thing in. Isn't that fun? I did it the first time just with bare hands, and I thought that was kind of fun, on the bottom as well as the top. And then I'm putting it in for 45 minutes and letting it bake. This is so savory. Oh, the fragrance is wonderful. I'll call it the aroma. How's that? All right. Get it on there. And then, yes, it's kind of fun to now just be able to peel these gloves off. All right. All right. So that, oops. All right, that's step number one. The next thing I'm going to do is get our pot roast ready. And I'm going to, this is going to be a little more awkward than it should have been, but I'm just going to swivel the whole computer. And it's not as high angled as the camera, but oh, this is going to work, isn't it? So I'm going to start this burner because there's a couple of things I'm going to do. And I'm dry sauteing. Now oh, that's the thing. It's going to kind of cut me off. Maybe not. I'm dry sauteing some onion. And I'll show you that technique. If you've been with us before, you could show it to the group. Because that's the way that we do... Uh, our most of our recipes at Lifestyle Medicine because as we look at the foods that keep us healthy, those are our whole food plant-based as opposed to processed foods, and oils are processed. And because of that, even though cold-pressed olive oil is one of the purest of the oils, we get our nutrients from the food rather than the oils. And if I were Chef AJ, I would be telling you no salt, and I do add salt to things, no oil, and no sugar. And we're not using sugar, we're not using oil. I have salt in, for example, the sodium and the tamari. But um, the dry saute is a technique that when you get this as part of your cooking skill repertoire, you'll find that you can save, even though I don't count calories, uh, I'm aware of the caloric density of foods. You can get 
you can make recipes and save hundreds and hundreds of calories on fat that you don't even taste by not feeling or by by not buying into the idea that everything you cook has to be made with um, with oil in order to saute to, or to get extra flavor. So I'm heating this. I'm going to put two cups of vegetable broth in this pan to get it heated up. And then I'm taking my one sliced onion and putting it into a pan that I've already heated. Onion is rather moist and so it weeps. And I'm going to let it start weeping a little bit, start getting a little bit brown. I'm on medium heat. And let me tell you about my, I'm walking away for a second. Let me tell you about my veg broth in case you're new to the group. While, uh, now I'm not going to walk across the kitchen and leave you that long, but in my freezer, I have a one gallon Ziploc bag that is in a convenient place and everything I make that has bits and pieces cut off, for example, green bean end stems, uh, bottom stems of, of, of asparagus, uh, bottom stems of my cilantro and my parsley, celery leaves that I'm not going to use, or celery stalks that are starting to get shriveled and old looking, but not moldy or anything. They all go in that bag. When the bag is full, that goes into this pot. This is an eight quart pot. Uh, and uh, covered by about a inch, two inches of water with maybe some bay leaf if you have it. I just have a little bay bush outside, and I'm, so I always have bay leaf, and I keep it low because a bay laurel can become a 40-foot tree. Uh, and I make out of that my own broth. You can buy broth by the quart uh, size container, but you don't have to if you, instead of throwing scraps away, use them for your broth. When the bag's full, you make your broth. It will fill this and a couple containers to go into the freezer. Now I hear the onion starting to sizzle a little bit. The recipe that I'm following is going to start and finish in this pot. And this is a eight cup, so a is it eight cup? Let me think, let me think. Four, eight, yes. So it's a two quarter, eight cup pot. And if I were making more than enough for, I'm going to say three people, I would make instead, if I didn't have that size, I would just make a standard, the eight quart, six quart, eight quart stock pot or um, soup pot size. Uh, and have some leftovers because I made this in this pot uh, for Thanksgiving and there were three of us and well there was a little left but basically we polished it off. Uh, Tim's old, my husband's oldest daughter was here and I said to her, oh well we'll give you leftovers. There was so little left over and I didn't want to part with it. I said, here I'll give you cookies instead. And I didn't want to say goodbye to what we had and it was next to nothing. Now what I just did, the onions are starting to sizzle. They're starting to render their juice. The juice is starting to lightly, very, very lightly brown. I add a little bit of broth and it bubbles up and it caramelizes. And I'll do that a couple of times and that will give me more flavor. The recipe calls for four uh, cloves of garlic. You've seen me talk about this before. It's something called the Tupperware chop and prep. They have it at on Amazon. It's a little expensive, $33, but I was preparing all of this today for class. I needed four cloves of garlic. I had two big heads of garlic that I bought. I love the big, big ones. And I thought, okay, I'll do the four. And then I thought, just keep going, man. And I like to, what is this? This is probably 15 cloves of garlic. I like to do a lot at once, put them in a glass jar, don't put them in plastic because you won't get the smell out. Uh, I put them in a little glass jar and it goes in my refrigerator for weeks and weeks. And one teaspoon, and this is a very uniform chop, 
one teaspoon is one clove of garlic. So if this asks for four, I'm keeping this going, heating this. Oh, let me start something. I'm going to stop myself for a second. The recipe calls for bringing the broth to a boil and then putting in two pounds of potatoes. I don't know that we need in here today two pounds of potatoes. Two pounds is this. It's about uh, 12, maybe 13 of these cute little guys. And I like this size because for dinner, each of us would then have, let's say, two potatoes, maybe three. Um, so I'm going to put these in. And when it comes to a simmer, yeah, I'm going to use all of them. Good. No, I'm going to use all but one because I want that layer to give me room to put carrots on top. Okay. When it comes to a simmer, I, let me put this over here. I'm going to cut it, give it five minutes, keep this going. So what I'm doing is two things. I'm starting the potato. It's going to cook for five minutes. Then I'm going to throw in some chunky carrot. Calls for four carrots. I probably used five because I remember last time thinking, I want more carrot. Uh, nice fat guys if you can find them because it looks good here. It's, it's, it gives you more body to eat rather than a skinny little carrot. I love the carrots that they have at the farm store, the Corona family farm store that we frequent every Sunday. It's a farmer's market. Well, not really a farmer's market. It's a stand and they grow everything and what is there has been picked that day in earth that is still full of nutrients in any case. Um, and they have carrots, but they're really thin and I don't, I, that's not what I want for this particular dish. So I think I got these at Clark's or somewhere where I could buy them by the individual carrot, but they're selling by a pound, like 99 cents or something like that. And um, peeled them and chopped them into those chunks like that, which I like the best. Now, this is almost done, so I'm going to have to get to the rest of my story about the garlic. So, 15 cubes or cloves of garlic. There. Okay. And it is chopped. Uh -oh. There. Chopped this way. And so you can see why instead of chopping four pieces and then have to go back and chop four more for some other recipe, I decided, oh, just fill it up, do this, and get it all done. So let me get this. And I have this nice uniformly chopped garlic. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to use a tablespoon of garlic, but I'm going to heap it because remember, one teaspoon chopped like this, and this finer chop is one clove of garlic. I've got three, and I'm Italian, I always add more. All right. Put this away, and then I'll put this in a glass jar later on. But anyway, it was worth the $33 that it cost. Okay, so I put the garlic in. Why didn't I put the garlic with the onions initially? Well, because garlic burns more easily than onion. Onion weeps, garlic will burn, it's drier. And so I put that on the very last, at the very end. And I want a little color in here, so I'm going to just let keep working. The potatoes have been simmering for almost five minutes. Uh, I don't think this is a science, and so I'm going to do what I need to do to kind of get done. And one of the ingredients, I'll go over the ingredients with you. So we start with the potatoes, put in the carrots. I'm going to then pile on these sautéed caramelized onions and garlic. I'm then going to pour over all of it some herbs. And if you have the recipe, it calls for dried sage, dried rosemary, um, fresh thyme, 
uh, rosemary sprigs to to embellish uh, at the end, to um, accent at the end. I pick thyme out of my garden, and I have, oh, did I leave it out? Yeah. This is kind of a fun thing to have in your kitchen, maybe an old-fashioned thing, because how often do we do this? I used to do, I used to eat turkeys, and of course I tied them up, their legs, as you call it, trust them, after I stuffed them, but I don't do that anymore. But I still like my little yarn ball. Uh, and that's what I cut a little bit of that off and I tied my thyme together because it tends to break up so much in a dish that the twigs, which never really soften that much, are not that fun to bite into. So after I, and I'm watching this carefully because I want color, but no burning, especially now that I have the garlic in there. And what it's doing is that it's sizzling can you see? The, yeah, you can see. Okay. It's sizzling. I said to Arwen when he couldn't get the camcorder. Arwen, I'm ruined. They're not going to be able to see anything. I have to swivel the computer rather than the camera. And you know what? That was all very dramatic. <laughs> but it's not been the end of the world. All right. Now we're getting color. That's what we want. And color is flavor. A little bit of caramelization is going to give us some really nice flavor. I was amazed at Thanksgiving when we had this, how much flavor this dish has. Okay, I then put in, ow, put a little lower, and then scatter on my carrot. We'll let the onions sit for a minute as the carrots do their thing for two minutes. Okay, I'm going to turn the onion off. I think it's brown enough. So I'll finish what I was saying. You're going to see me scatter the onion over this. It couldn't be an easier meal. Scatter the onion over. I'm going to sprinkle over the herbs. And this is what I wanted to tell you about the herbs. Sage, rosemary, you may not have fresh thyme, so let's say dry thyme. Um, are you going to buy all those bottles, your sage, your rosemary, your thyme? Instead, because I didn't have sage, even though I grow it. Um, I don't know why I didn't want to pick it. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, instead, I used herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence. Uh, herbs. H E R B. I think it's S, I don't think there's an E, uh, D, D, E, and then Provence, uh, Provence. And Herbs de Provence is rosemary, thyme, sage, chervil, maybe fennel, um, uh, tarragon. There are some other aromatics, but there are these European, uh, I'll call it Mediterranean flavors that are, I don't need the three, I'll happily take the four or five flavors. So. Herbs de Provence is wonderful in a dish that you want to have a strong, savory flavor. And so I just did two teaspoons of the Herbs de Provence. And you can find them organic. You can find them. And it's, it's a it's a herb mixture. You can find them organic and you can find them uh, conventional. Okay. I think that's long enough. Now, all right. So you can see. I'm going to lift you. There. Okay. You can see the carrots on the potatoes. I'm going to now scatter over that. These, can you see the color? Yum, yum. Scatter that over. These beautiful onions with all that garlic. Now, if I wanted to take the time, because this kind of bothers me, I don't know if you can see that there's a bunch of things stuck on here. There's a word called deglaze the pan, or a phrase, deglaze the pan. I would put this back on here one more time, heat it up, pour my broth. It, oh, what the heck, just do it, man. Shoot. Because that broth will go and turn brown, and then I've got more flavor. Okay, so the recipe calls for the herbs over that. I'm going to save just a little bit for the very top. So I'm scattering that. 
the time, four sprigs of time, I tied them together so I'm not trying to fish them out. And then it calls for, but I'm going to do this at the end. Oh, I'll go, no, I'm going to do this at the end. Okay. Then it calls for, um, you can kind of see, I don't, I'll, I'll carry you over in a minute. Okay. Then it calls for these gorgeous portobello mushrooms. And some of you will look at this and know exactly where I got them at Trader Joe's. And they're not expensive. $3.49 for two. I got four of them per the recipe. And you might think, gosh, Nan, that is, what, six, seven dollars. Uh, well, think of, this is our pot roast. Think of what $7 would buy you if you were buying a pot roast. Not that much. And I'm, these are mushrooms that I've already sliced. And the way I did it was first I washed them. And the way you wash a mushroom, don't wash it, don't get it wet. It goes, it takes up all the water. It's just damp on a paper towel. You'll use several. Uh, and then wipe it over, turn it over, wipe it. I've heard some people say, oh, I take the um, gills out. I'm not going to take the gills out. I love the gills. I think they're all part of the mushrooms. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm creating what, when we're finished, kind of looks like a roast with these potatoes and carrots sticking out on either side. And there we go. And then my last mushroom. So I just cut them in half and then cut each half in half. In other words, I cut them in, in big, thick quarters. Quarter slices. Okay. Now. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Watch what happens. Now I've heated it too much though. Can you see this? You see that darkness that just happened? That is pure flavor. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. I'm going to walk away for a second. All right, and now I'm going to pour over that, and this is what you can decide how to amend. I'm going to pour over that what the recipe recommends. Da, 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 da. Tim came home. <laughs> he likes to have a glass of wine with dinner. I usually don't have anything. Yeah, well, water. And he said, what happened to my wine? Because he had a cut of, he knew he had a glass, nice glass left. Well, I had already taken a half of it, well, four ounces of it. So I'm pouring over a very nice Cabernet Sauvignon. But if you didn't use that, you could use broth. And I think to enrich it, to give it more humph, umph, I would give, I would put in maybe a tablespoon or so of tomato paste. You can even buy tomato paste at TJ's in a, a tube and go whoosh, so that it's not like opening a, a, um, a can and then using part of it and wondering what to do with it. Well what you would do with it is you just put it in the freezer in small containers or ice cube trays. And then I'm adding to that the last part of the recipe, which is a combination of balsamic vinegar and, um, oh, and Worcester sauce. Now the recipe called for vegan Worcester sauce. Why would that be? Because Worcester sauce has anchovies. Did I get vegan Worcester sauce? Didn't have it. And I am just using regular Worcester sauce. And so, yeah, I've got some anchovy in there. And then on top of that, oh, I wanted to put the rest of the herbs to belongs. If Joelle is on and Joelle is French, she's probably thinking, man, you're not saying it right. And she's probably saying it to herself in that gorgeous accent of hers. If you're there, hi, Joelle. Okay, do you see what I'm adding? I'm adding more umami. I am adding a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is loaded with vitamins, minerals, protein, uh, and a great additional flavor. So... There it is, people. I'm going to ow, 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 ow. cover this and let it 
or pot roast roast. You know what? Move it around just a little bit. All right. Let the pot roast roast for at least 20 minutes, but basically until I'm ready to take it off. All right, I'll leave these things here. I'm going to move these over, and let's go to our next. I'm going to leave you for a second, and I'll move you over. Okay, so the next thing we're going to make as that's cooking, let me get you on. Hot roast doing well. Everything's fine. The next thing I'm going to do is the Brussels sprouts. So recipe calls for two pounds of Brussels sprouts. I hope you like Brussels sprouts. And if you don't, maybe it's because you haven't had them cooked well. These are really, really good. The recipe for the cauliflower called for 425 degrees. The recipe for the Brussels sprouts, 400. I'm going with 400. The cauliflower can cook longer if it needs to, but I didn't want to crisp up the, the um, Brussels sprouts. I didn't want to dry them out by going too high. So, okay. So what I have is cleaned, trimmed Brussels sprouts cut in half, and I mixed together a combination all in here of some salt. I used a quarter of a teaspoon, pepper, garlic, minced garlic, applesauce, or excuse me, apple juice or wine, and I used apple juice. And, and you could use apple juice in there, but I think it's a little too sweet. Um, prune juice might be interesting. There's a, um, there's a, a French wine that I used to cook with, put in my roast. Is it Marcel? That is a, a thick, red, almost a sweet wine, but not really sweet. And it was, it was wonderful with um, meat dishes. And this is kind of like our meat dish. Um, and so fruit juices, like a prune juice, would be similar to that if I use something like that. Okay. And then some Dijon mustard, maple syrup, and some fresh rosemary that I got out of my garden. And I'm going to pour this all over the Brussels sprouts, toss them. And if you look at your recipe, it says toss everything together except typo because there's no except toss everything together and then put it on the tray i'm only doing a pound because instead of using a large tray and having that much brussels sprout uh, and even though i like doing things as a batch cook preparation uh, that was just more than i wanted to do right now so this is one pound and I got them from the Corona Family Farm store on Madison near Victoria. Because, again, everything comes fresh every day. And the ground they use, they don't spray, is marvelous. And then calls for nuts. And I was going to put the nuts on at the end after I toasted them. And I thought, why would I do that? Why not just let them toast with these savory Brussels sprouts. It also, the recipe called for Dijon mustard, which I used, but I used the Dijon mustard that has um, seeds in it. Uh, the seeded mustard, and again, you know, my favorite place is Trader Joe's. It's not far. They're, I think, relatively inexpensive, easy to walk in, walk out, especially if you're old, <laughs> at 65 or older, especially now. We can walk in early and be able to walk right in front of the line so age has its benefits i i think a number of you know in gosh it's oh is today the no tomorrow tomorrow i will be one month away from turning 70 and so age has its benefits i'm going to start these all facing up don't know why but it just makes me better to uh, feel better to have them all consistent because then if I want to 
stir them midway, then I know which one's been stirred and which one's not. Okay, so get all that mixed around. I have these on a, and I'll show you later, on a base of parchment paper and the same thing with the cauliflower. I meant to show you that, and I'll talk about parchment paper when it comes to our cookies, which we're going to do next. All right, so look, everybody. This is what it looks like. We've got nuts. We have this savory solution. I have the, the Dijon mustard with the seeds, and so it has even more, I'll call it texture. And we're putting this in for about 20 minutes. Um, I'll put it in with, oh, look, look, look. Okay, I'm gonna lift you up. Look inside of my oven. Do you see the cauliflower head? Yay! It's getting toasty and brown. We don't want it to burn because it has those seasonings on it that might get bitter if they're burnt, but it's not. I'm glad I put it at the lower temperature. I did the same thing at um, Thanksgiving. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, and the last, is dessert. But I wanted to tell you something. I wanted to show you something I found. It's kind of fun to find things when you get the cut out of the refrigerator. All right. I'll talk about that in a minute, but let's get this started. So I have extra ripe bananas, and I had to think about this in advance because there's no sweetness in this. There's uh, What I should say is there is no sweetener in this. All I have is banana for sweetness and applesauce. There's no dates. There's no agave. There's no honey. None of that. And so if the banana is nice and dark. It could have been darker than this. If the banana is nice and dark, then the uh, sweetness is going to be quite pronounced. And that's a nice thing. You know what I did once? I took these, some of this, and I chewed it up thinking, why am I always throwing this away? Well, now, now I know. Because they're kind of um, tannic. They make your mouth pucker, like eating a unripened persimmon. Okay, so we're going to mash the banana, and the easiest way to do that is with a fork, and I like using a serving fork. Now let me get things off of this. All right, easy. So Barb Douglas, if you are with Lifestyle Medical and you go on to our Facebook page, we have a wonderful Facebook page. Sometimes I forget to look, and yeah, shame on me for that because I miss things. And I saw that she posted on November 24th her batch cook um, effort. And batch cooking is the smartest thing you can possibly do if you want to eat well all the time and not feel like you're spending too much time in the kitchen. So she had a big pan of roasted vegetables, a big pan of sweet potatoes, a big pan of um, double stuffed sweet potatoes with broccoli and kale stuffed again into a hollowed sweet potato that was then mashed with these vegetables and then put back in. And um, she had these cookies. So she shared the cookies with us and on one of our group meetings. And for those of you who don't know lifestyle medicine, I don't know again if we have our gossipy friends here. It's so much fun to be part of a practice that offers you group meetings, cooking classes, classes with our dietitian uh, on uh, making good choices to that keep you healthy. Uh, as it relates to the foods that you eat and feed your family every day. And um, we have a resilience class, which is a meditation relaxation class on Mondays. So we were at a group meeting, and Barbara, Barb, uh, texted this recipe. Hardly any ingredients. Three ripe bananas, 
a third of a cup of applesauce, two cups rolled oats, quarter cup of almond milk, quarter cup of raisins, a uh, quarter cup of walnuts or pecans. I may have added that myself. I don't remember if she had that, but I like nuts and everything. And um, some vanilla and some cinnamon. And she told us today at that, that group that she's a cinnamon um, hound and she never goes by the amount. She always puts way more in. So in honor of her, I put a little more in today. Okay, so I've, I have a mashed banana and I'm throwing into that. Now, you know what? Uh, let me think if I want to do it that way. I think I'm going to do what I did last time. I like it better. I don't want to just throw the dry ingredient on top of the wet. If I were thinking, I would mash the banana in a small bowl and put the dry in first, but it doesn't matter because I'm doing it right now. So I'm taking two cups of rolled oats. I use organic gluten-free because I need to do gluten-free. And I'm adding to that uh, everything. Actually, with the banana, why don't I add the applesauce, because that will be our wet on wet. There we go. And I'm going to add the almond milk into which I put the vanilla. Mmm. Okay. And I just get vanilla extract. Some people that don't want the alcohol that comes with any extract will buy the powdered vanilla. And I haven't done that. I don't even know where to get it. But I think that that's a pretty good idea. Um, but I'm using just uh, regular vanilla extract, but it's organic. I feel better with things not being sprayed willy-nilly with whatever they feel like putting on them. And then I'm going to add the dry fur to the, the oats. So I have the cinnamon in a generous amount. The raisins, and I already broke these up and do that. When you get your raisins out of the bag, and I like these, these are organic Thompson seedless. I got these at TJ's and um, they're little. Some some raisins are big, chunky guys. It means you don't get as many in a bite and or you don't get them as well mixed into a batter in order to give you at least a few raisins per cookie. Uh, the thing I really like is currants, and I always bought my currants, and here goes the pecans. I always bought my currants at uh, the La Sierra Whole Foods Market, and um, they didn't have them. I went to the Clarks in Loma Linda, and they didn't have them. So, because currants are like a raisin, but you can get three, three, Currants in a, in a raisin volume wise, so that you've got that much more that's spread throughout your 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 meal. But I just this is all I got was the organic Thompson seedless, really well priced, but less expensive. And I'll tell you what I wanted to say in a minute about the um, about the applesauce, and that was mixed in with the milk and the uh, the the almond milk the applesauce, and the vanilla. Okay, so I'm putting all of this in here now. And I wanted the cinnamon to kind of coat the oats and not get kind of lost in the moist. So I could do it either way. I could put the moist in or this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it that way. Okay, so now I'm mixing. This is as easy as it is, people to have wonderful oatmeal. Oh, I was going to say chocolate chips. You know, they have vegan chocolate chips, meaning no dairy. And we could have done that, too. I think that's getting a little decadent. Now, if I wanted, I could let this sit a little bit and let the oats absorb some of this moisture and the resulting dough would be more, um, I'm going to say, uh, maybe creamy. Uh, 
but I'm not going to do that because we don't have to and we don't have the time. So, and you can tell by, well, just rationale that there's nothing really exacting here because my banana could have been that big or it could have been a smaller banana. And this, I'm seeing that this is rather moist, probably more moist than my last batch, probably because I had bigger bananas because everything else is measured. Okay, I'm getting it really well mixed. Break up that little bit of banana that was left. Okay, now that's left in chunks. Okay. I love this the kind of ice cream scoop that pushes things out. A lot of us have ice cream scoops that you kind of have to get things out of, but this pushes things out. And it's a nice way to do a batter or something thick and still have the ability, the ability to get it to come out as the circle that this forms. Okay. Boy, this is much more moist than my last one. I can't wait to see what this is like. All right. Oh, I love the way that looks. Okay. And this makes about a dozen, and you'll see what I mean by about. They don't spread because if you noticed, there is no, or as you noticed, I'm sure you did, there are no leavening ingredients in this. There are no, there's no baking soda, no baking powder, um, nothing that rises. So this is like a dense, it's almost like my morning oatmeal because when I cook oatmeal, I like it really thick and then I add a tablespoon and a half of a flax seed. Uh oh, you disappeared. I just have to make sure you're there. Of a flax seed, I, I mix flax, chia, and hemp, but twice as much flax as the other two, and stir that into the oatmeal, and the whole thing kind of thickens up. And I like it that way. And so this kind of reminds me of this. And if you think about this, really, this is like breakfast. So if you want a snack, and Barbara and I and the group, we're all talking about this today because as we get into the holidays, it's so easy to get lured into having probably more sweet things around and therefore in your mouth than usual. And the problem with that is even though they're really healthy, like these are very healthy, but I would make a big mistake if I kept them around all the time and anytime I was a little bit hungry, ate one of these. Because you know what would happen and it would happen to you too? You start preferring that. It's called the pleasure trap. If you're familiar with Doug Lyle and Dr. John McDougall. No, not John McDougall. Um, Goldhammer, Alan Goldhammer. Um, the things that are highly, um, highly flavored, Super sweet, super salty, super oily, lure us. And then something else doesn't taste as good. That's why people who occasionally have a donut, apple fritters, etc., probably aren't going to have an apple after that for a long, long time because the apple is downright boring after you eat an apple fritter. And there goes your whole food, plant-based nutritional profile. And so some of these things you just make decisions about. You just say no because you understand the ramifications. Sorry for the noise. All right, now this, look at how pretty these are. Look at that. Wait, there. <laughs> what is this? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, it's twelve. Uh, lower oven is 350 degrees, I'm putting that in there, and that's 20 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna take out, because, well, actually, I'm gonna test. I'm gonna turn you around. Okay. 
the, I'm not even going to open the pot roast yet. We're just about to pull this thing together. Let me test. No, 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 no. This needs some more time. Okay, good. And the, you know what? I'm gonna do a little toss around of these. Oh, you know what I'm doing? I'm losing heat, shoot. Okay. All right. So we're going to have some time here because we're gonna to have to give these things some time to finish cooking. And even though I could serve them and you wouldn't know the difference, <laughs> I would. And I want them to be cooked perfectly. So I'm going to give you a chance to ask some questions if you would like. Oh, no, I have something to tell you first. Okay. So the apple juice, I, I, applesauce. The applesauce I bought, I, I got some from Clark's organic unsweetened applesauce, and it was, I think, $6 for the jar. Trader Joe's organic unsweetened applesauce, I think it was $3.50 or something. The problem is that I don't eat applesauce. I eat apples. And, but if I'm making something like this or throwing them into a batch of buckwheat pancakes, let's say, then I want to have it around, but I don't want to buy this much. And yet I can buy the little cups, but I hate to spend that much more. So I can put them in a small container and freeze them. And ice cube trays are one way of doing it. But I found these, actually I heard, did I hear this? Oh, I think I heard it from Tammy at Tammy's Nutmeg Notebook. And, and do yourself a favor, if you like cooking classes, look for AJ on YouTube, Chef AJ. She's doing interviews and she, she's, she's a trained, um, um, not only chef, but she was a pastry chef. So she has the skills of a established professional chef. Tammy of Tammy's Nutmeg Notebook has been whole food plant-based vegan, but I don't use that term as easily because that means not only no honey, but no leather. And, and some people are that dedicated and some people aren't. And so whole food plant-based is what T. Colin Campbell uses as his descriptive and that's what I'm comfortable with as well. Well, she, um, I think she showed these and look for her Tammy at Nutmeg Notebook and watch her cooking videos. These are all free. They're all 15 minutes, 20, a half an hour, an hour of great training on cooking. So these are ice cube trays, but not for ice cubes. For example, in here, it's marked quarter cup and a half a cup. So I'm gonna see how far I can go because this recipe called for a third of a cup. I'm going to fill these halfway between a third of a cup, I mean a quarter cup and a half a cup. And do you know what that is? <laughs> That's about a third of a cup. You know what a third of a cup is? It's six tablespoons and no, 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 that's not true. A third of a cup is five tablespoons, five and a third tablespoons or something like that. Um, and so I'll use uh, a quarter of a cup and then I'll just add a tablespoon and a half sometimes if the quarter of a cup's already in use and I don't want to mess up my whole stack. So what I'm doing is I'm filling these with what I believe, because I don't think this is a science, what I believe to be a third of a cup, somewhere between a half a cup, which is four or eight ounces, and a quarter of a cup, which is four ounces. You're going to get a third of a cup, which is five, not ounces, I'm sorry, tablespoons. Half a cup, eight tablespoons, quarter of a cup, four tablespoons, and third of a cup, five point one, three, something like that tablespoon. So in other words, 
five tablespoons plus one teaspoon. Okay, so do you see how many of these I'm gonna get? I can make this recipe without rebuying applesauce, but more important, there are things I could put applesauce in. You know what? The applesauce may have been a great way, instead of the wine, to add some flavor and richness to the, the, um, the, the pot roast. Okay. So I'm getting one, two, three, four, five. So what are these called? They're called super, S-U-P-E-R, like soup, super cubes, super cubes. And I got them on Amazon, and there are, these are marked a half and a quarter cup. These are marked one and, is that two cups? They have a number of sizes. Yeah, this is marked one cup, and, oh, a half a cup and one cup, and this is marked two cups. So I can fill the, these two with soup, freeze it, put them in a Ziploc, both of them in a Ziploc, in one big Ziploc, and separate it with parchment paper or, um, or wax paper. And, and, and then just defrost them in a bowl. Because you're never going to defrost, you're never going to, if you're going to heat in a microwave, you never do it in plastic anyway. You do it in glass. Or you just put it in a pan, just pop it out into a pan. So there's a little of this left, and there's not enough to put into another one. And I'll just scoop it out for something. But see what I've done? Now I'll put this in my freezer, pop them out, because this is silicone. It pops really easily. And this might be something that those of you that don't have a lot of room for a lot of storage containers may enjoy doing. And you can freeze things like this, but you can freeze soups and stews and your broth when you make your broth. Uh, so are there any questions? We have a little bit of time before I start pulling things out. There we go. If you don't, I'm going to start talking because I have things I'll talk about. No, no questions? See, I think people are writing things, but I'm too far away. Where do you get the ice tray that was on Amazon? Traders has alcohol-free pure vanilla in the same bottle as regular. Didn't know that. That's good to know. Thank you, Rebecca. Except what? Oh, see? That was the one that I messed up, and so it's except nothing. It's put that in except, and that was going to be the nuts, because I was going to say put the nuts on top after you toast them, and then as I was typing, I thought, no, put them in with it, and I never took the except off, so I apologize for that. Vicki Snyder, my goodness, you're there. Hi, Vicki, is here, and I can see and hear you. Thank you. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, you can see and hear. Okay, so we're looking good. All right, so what I wanted to talk to you about, and a number of you know this, is that, oh gosh, was it, it's almost six months ago, I decided, oh gosh, I'm going to be 70 years old, and oh my goodness, now what am I going to do to stay healthy, because after all, that's old age, and when you get old, then every year you're fighting a new malady, and before you know it, you're on all kinds of medication, and before you know it, you can't walk well, and before you know it, your knees hurt. And I went through that whole thing, and boy, look at that. And then something hit, and I thought to myself, you know what? We know exactly what to do in lifestyle medicine to do what the people in the blue zones have done, and I th which is, and the blue zones are the five places in the world that National Geographic and Dan Buettner who specializes in aging um, uh, studies, uh, they isolated these five communities or, or identified these five communities as the longest lived commu uh, people, communities of the longest living people, healthy, vibrant, living healthy, vibrant lives in the world. And the five places are Icaria, Greece, Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, 
the Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica, and da 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 da. I always do this da da da. da. Um, Loma Linda, Loma Linda, California. Why? The Seventh Day Adventist population. Our Seventh Day Adventist population in Loma Linda lived ten times longer than the general population. Why? Because the belief that our bodies are on loan from God and must be taken care of is part of it, but it's also what Dan Butner found to be one of the commonalities of all of the Blue Zones, and that is that they move all the time, movement, that they have community, they feel connected to other people. There have been studies that show that when people, groups of people, all with the same illness, are studied, those who have community will live longer than those who don't. In addition, the people are, um, they, they, they are, uh, they sleep well, the resilience part. They have ways of stress relief. Yikes. Sorry, guys. And, didn't even know that was on. And um, they are primarily, by and large, whole food, plant-based, exclusive or whole food plant-based strong um, and that's why we train this way and I thought to myself if we're doing all of that if I'm working with patients if I'm seeing these results people come in I could name names but I don't think I'm allowed to do that and I won't but in this venue but people who come in with some things that cripple them that could lead to amputations, could lead to heart attacks that recover completely, as a matter of fact, reversing disease. They do it with lifestyle as medicine, not medicine as survival. And I thought to myself, I'm not going to look at 70 as the age of decrepitude. I don't think decrepitude's a word, but I'm going to say it, decrepitude. I decided, no, 70 is going to be the beginning of my next well, third of my life, in other words, the next 20 to 30 years, it's not quite a third, I am going to be focused on having a ball. And I decided, I think I'll write about that. And that's what Aging Powerfully, a book that I have coming out in December, sometime around the 20th, is about. It's a memoir, so it comes in with a history of maybe oh, some of the challenges that I've had with food my entire life because I had some pretty uh, strong challenges that are all outlined there that I was able to overcome with the help of a whole food plant-based diet because it's so satisfying. Add that with plant-based nutrition that we've learned how to enjoy and um, highlight through Joel Furman and Dr. Greger and Dr. Esselstyn. And then you add to that purpose. And that's one of the most important uh, elements of longevity as noted in the blue zones, as noted in so many studies. People have to wanna. They have to wanna and they have to have a purpose and they have to have a reason. So I thought that's it. I'm gonna write a book. I'm going to set a course and I'm going to be on a mission. And that mission is to bring as many people along with me as possible and to show them that we baby boomers, instead of falling apart, are actually at just at the beginning of the next 20 to 30 years. That's an entire lifetime, a lifetime for some people. The next 20 or 30 years to see what we can do to make this a great life. So look for my book, but just as importantly, consider everything you do on a daily basis that affects your health to be pivotal because actually it is. I'm going to get a wrap to put the cookies on when they come out, but we're not really worried about the cookies because I have some already prepared that I'll just show you, and they don't look much different. They're just a little bit brown. And I wanted to talk to you about parchment paper because it was on the cookie sheet, but I didn't mention it as I meant to. Uh, the least expensive parchment paper I have found is from um, 
uh, it's the Kirkland brand from Costco, but some people don't get to Costco. It's sometimes such a nuisance. And so things like Smart and Final, and those are open to everyone, and you don't have to have a membership. You can get the bigger boxes because, for example, if I go to Clark's, which is like um, Sprouts, but uh, different, uh, they have parchment paper in a roll of maybe 15 feet, and it's $6, 5 or $6. This one is 200 feet or maybe even more, and it was, I don't remember how much it was, but it was, yeah, 205 feet. But this is what we use instead of greasing pans. We just cut a piece of parchment paper. I, um, for Tim's lunch, he loves to have, I have an air fryer in a Breville oven, and I, part of cooking in advance, part of um, batch cooking, cook a bunch of potatoes that I can either smash and put in the air fryer to crisp them up or just slice. And we put them on this, put them in the air fryer, and they come out crispy. And that's his, not quite a chip, but that's what he has along with his avocado sandwiches for lunch that he loves and big old salads and things. So get yourself some parchment paper. That's part of the tools of the trade uh, as it relates to um, whole food plant-based. I think it's time to start plating things. So. Let me take one thing off at a time. I'm going to trim it and take a look at our roast. Here, I'll let you do it with me. I really miss you. I miss knowing you're there. I see this little screen with a couple of names, but I really don't know who's on tonight. And I'm I'm sorry about that. And I'm... I can't talk to you the way I would if we were um, in class. So I do miss you, even though I never want to go back to that tiny little room with no oven, no stove, and try to do a meal. That is a nuisance. But in group, it's kind of fun to talk to people. Oh, and I wanted to show you these were the potatoes that I, I cooked. They're a three-pound bag, uh, again, Trader Joe's. I just like going and getting everything I want at one place. Organic gold potatoes. And they're, they have the, and again, you might think, oh, well, I don't really need organic food. They are maybe 30, 40 cents more than the non-organic. And if something's organic, they may not use petroleum products. They may not use herbicides like Roundup. Uh, they, the fertilizers cannot be synthetic. They have to be either animal based. Well, actually, I don't even know if they're using animal based, but organic. In other words, all my scraps that don't go into my bag in the freezer go into my compost pile. And then that soil goes back into the soil. That's how you have really healthy, uh, uh, soil and therefore healthy foods. So I did something wrong tonight and that is that I put on the recipe that I use to thicken the broth uh, uh, cornstarch I could still do it but I don't think I'm going to and you're going to see that the start that the broth is loose it's watery I added I, this was my part to the recipe I added it could be arrowroot it could be cornstarch um, there are other starches, but I added that, about a tablespoon and a half water. You don't want to stir this because you don't want to dishevel what you've just created. And so I poured it into the sides and then just kind of took a spoon and did this to the sides to, to, um, to blend it because I liked that thicker, I'll call it gravy when we have it that way, but I'm going to show you this. I'm going to pull out. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pull out that thyme. See how nicely I can pull out the thyme? If I hadn't done this, it would be scattered kind of all over. And again, the sticks, when you when you chew on them, aren't, aren't any fun. Uh, look. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty? It looks, oh, I'm gonna turn it. Gotta get all artsy on you. There. Mm. 
it's almost like you're looking at a rose. Not that that should be so appealing. I haven't had any meat in this house. Do you notice how shiny my oven is? <laughs> the reason my oven is so shiny is because, oh, there. I had to put the computer up on a couple of books. That's why I said Arwen. The computer's too low. They're not going to be able to see. So I piled up, gosh, about five, almost six inches of books under it. All right. So that you could see. And it all worked out tonight, didn't it? All right. So we have that. Now, I'm going to plate. Oh, my gosh. Does this look pretty? Uh, can you see me? Yes, you can, kind of. It's handy to have a nice long spatula. These kinds of tools you can find easily at um, Smart and Final because they are a restaurant supply store. Okay. And I'm going to put this here. And back this up. And the Brussels sprouts. When the Brussels sprouts are finished, I like to toss them in a bowl because it is too in a bowl as opposed to toss in the bowl. Just put them in there because I like them to kind of steam together a little bit. And what I'm doing is, you can't really see because I'm doing my, there. I'm kind of pushing them off the plate. I would have used a smaller bowl, but this was just the first thing that I grabbed. And then I'm going to put the nuts on top of them. So I'm, I'm rather than just, you know, pulling it all in there, I'm kind of moving them away from the nuts. And I'm going to add something to this that if you ever watch Chef AJ or Tammy, it's not make note, but you're going to hear about a lot, and that is the reduced balsamic vinegars. Because they really add a, well, it's acetic acid, it's actually healthy. It, our body likes acids. Our body likes citric acid, acetic acid, um, bitters. They do something for us as it, as it relates to digestion that helps us absorb nutrients better. You see, by having this paper on here, I still have a bit of a mess on the tray, but look at all of what I don't have. See, I don't have all of that in my tray now. And the same thing with the, um, with the cauliflower. Look at, look at that. Look, actually, the big chunky part of it just fell away, but there was a there was um, quite a, a dark spot. Okay, so we have that. I'm gonna pull that off. All right, and then I just heard that the cookies are finished. Um, let me turn everything off. But I wanted to show you that these cookies were already prepared. Put them on a little tray or a little plate with some raspberries. Now the only thing we don't have here is a fresh salad and for Thanksgiving, what I did offer, and I, I didn't put the recipe together, but it's something that you could do so easily. One of the things we love are tomatoes while we can still get tomatoes, and we can still get them now. And I get these little guys at the Corona Family Farms. You can get them at Farmer's Markets. You can get them at Trader Joe's, but there's nothing, where am I? But there's nothing like a tomato that's been picked off a vine that morning. Cut them in half, sometimes in half again, even though they're awfully small, but in half is fine. Throw them in a bowl with some green onion or some um, sliced red onion, 
with a little balsamic vinegar. And one of the ones that I'm referring to, there's California balsamics, and I have a number of those. But this you can get without having to order it. You find there. And this is Napa Naturals. You can get this at Clark's. You can get it, I believe, at Sprouts. And it's a reduced vinegar. It's a 4% acidity vinegar instead of a 6. And so it's kind of um, cooked down. There's no sugar. And yet they add a sort of a sweetness and a tang to anything. And so I'm just going to drizzle it over the Brussels sprouts. Mm, yum, yum, yum. There you go. I don't know if you can see how pretty, let me pull that down, look. Look how pretty that is. And then I'm going to accent our plate with some fresh rosemary. If you don't grow rosemary, do it. You can put that in a pot out in your backyard. It's so flavorful, but just as important, rosemary is sort of a bit of a stimulant. Lavender is a relaxant and you walk by and you do this and it just lights your brain up and let's plate something all right so this is napa naturals no it's yeah natural yeah napa valley naturals balsamic vinegar but it's grand reserve that's the one that is the especially flavorful it's about eight dollars a bottle but it'll last you a long long time uh, sprinkle it over a salad over freshly roasted vegetables I could, well, actually, I think it would be delicious on this as well. Ooh. And then the recipe calls for sprinkling some green onion over this and the entire table. Okay. And let's plate it. Um, I'll use this. All right. So on the side, we could have a little bowl of sliced tomato with onion, a little bit of fresh basil if you have it, if you grow it or you can buy it. Actually, at Trader Joe's, I buy mine in a pot, a five-inch pot that I keep watered on the patio and just take leaves off of so that there's those fresh, that fresh flavor. You can use chopped cilantro. So I'm going to serve up, you see the onion, a couple of potatoes. I don't mean to tease you, but this is dinner tonight. <laughs> and lots of those carrots that I wanted. And then, excuse my fingers, my entire slice of, and I'll even cheat and take another one, of the mushroom. And when you bite into this, this is so, so satisfying because the mushroom has a very, um, it has a, I, see, I want to say meat-like, but that's not appealing. I don't want a meat-like anything, actually. I've got, you know what I'm going to do? Yes. I'm going to give the plate to this. And on the side, we're going to have of Brussels sprouts. And I am going to put my slice of cauliflower there. Look at how pretty. And then I'll put my slice of cauliflower next to it. There's our dessert with a little tea. And let's see. Perfect. Don't fall apart. All right. It's tender. And I'll put a little bit of onion on it. Okay. And can you see what I'm doing? 
<laughs> you can see the floor. All right. And I'm going to put a little broth on it. Okay. There's our meal, everyone. This was inexpensive. The most expensive part was the, the mushrooms. But the mushrooms are your main dish. They have protein in them. They have vitamins. They are highly nutritious. They're one of what Joe Furman calls a G-bomb. Greens. No, it's greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds and nuts. They... Cauliflower organic at Trader Joe's was maybe $3.50. The Brussels sprouts, a couple of dollars at the farm store. And potatoes and carrots. And we have a beautiful meal. And this would make a great holiday. If you have people in the family that want their traditional holiday roasts, just keep bringing in more and more vegetables. People don't have to go whole food, plant-based, exclusive. If that's not what they want and if they shun you for even bringing it up, just keep bringing more and more vegetables into their lives. Make them taste really good. And eventually they may find that that's what they prefer rather than the heaviness of the meats. But um, that's our meal tonight. Bon appetit. Any questions? Let me see if I can see if there's anything here. Um... I think that's all I know because I can't see any other feed. Um, Arwen, is there anything else that I need to cover? And I want to thank Arwen for being on tonight. I'm going to put the veggies together and put our dessert off to the side. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'm talking to myself. I wish I were talking to you. I think that's that, people. It is 7.25. We are finished. Um, thank you for being here. I hope you have your recipe sheet. Uh, this is easy to do, but you're going to want to have all of the little details uh, in order to make them work for you. And I think I still do like that little bit of cornstarch in the broth because I like the broth just a little bit more like a gravy than a broth. And actually, it wouldn't have mattered as much if I had used a serving dish that had sides. You know, like a big, this is one of my favorite. Love, love, love these bowls because not only are they beautiful, I think they're Italian um, or Portuguese, but, um, but a meal like this, served in this, even with the cauliflower on the side, and even the Brussels sprouts would have been quite nice. And then all the, the, the juices would be together in that way. So, oh, did I take, oh, I haven't taken the cookies out. I looked at the, um, the cooling tray, and that's how I knew. But they're fine. So this is the... They're moist on the inside. They're nice and crisp on the outside. This is my, um, the parchment paper. You can see how easily things come off of it. And even though this is silicone, ouch, it's burning. There. Okay, people. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you for being here. Have a great night, and I can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.